Hi, and welcome to our final introduction to literature searching video. Today we're going to take everything we've learned over our past two videos and apply it into successful searches in CINAHL and PubMed. For our search demonstration, we're going to use the clinical question and search strategy we developed in our second video. This clinical question asked if bed alarms help to reduce falls in hospitalized patients. And now we're going to run searches in databases to see what types of research literature has been written on this topic. If you remember the pyramid of evidence from our first video, you'll know that we're looking for studies and articles that are higher on the pyramid of evidence if they exist. Let's start our search in CINAHL. Remember, you always want to access Kornhauser resources from our library homepage. If you need a reminder of how to do this, please refer to the end of the first video in the series. Once you open the database, this is what you'll see. Let's ignore all the options that make up the bottom section of the page and focus on the search bars at the very top. You'll notice that CINAHL defaults to three search bars that are all set up for Boolean searching, with these little drop boxes that contain all our Boolean operators. You don't have to use all the search boxes if you don't need them, and if you need more, you can add them by hitting this little plus. And likewise, you can remove excess ones using this little minus. Three works for us though, because our search had three separate OR strings. So I'm going to go and enter each string into its own separate search box. You may notice that CINAHL is giving me auto-suggestions for words to enter. I would always glance over the suggestions to see if anything of use is being offered, but don't just accept what is being auto-completed for you without reading it over carefully because it might not be what you're looking for. As you can see, the little drop boxes that connect our search boxes default to AND, which is what we want. All our synonyms linked with OR are in our separate search boxes, and then all these boxes are now linked with AND. So I'm ready to hit search and see what my results are. I got 11 results. So let's quickly scan them to see what kinds of literature we found. Looking at the first study, I can see that it's a randomized trial. That's a higher level of study, so that's a great option to pick as long as the title matches what we're looking for. And by reading it, it definitely seems like it's relevant to our topic. Our second option, however, is only an editorial. That's the lowest level of evidence, so we might want to skip it if there are other higher options. Our third result doesn't clearly state what kind of article it is. Therefore, we should click on the title and open up a fuller view of the citation information. Reading all the information at the top and the abstract still doesn't tell me exactly what type of article this is. But it is topical, so I'm still interested in seeing it in full text. On the left side of this page is a button that says, find it at UofL. You will find this link in every research database that is owned by UofL. When you click on it, you'll either be taken directly to the full PDF page or a page within our catalog, which looks like this. If we have the full text, there will be a link like this that takes you to it. If we do not own it, there will be a blue bar running across the page that says full text is not owned. In that case, scroll down and click on this button that says request item through interlibrary loan. Interlibrary loan accounts are free and allow you to request items not owned by the university. Simply click this button and if you own an account already, you can log in or if you're a new user, scroll down and select first time users to set up an account. 
Remember, evidence-based medicine is all about the best available evidence. And while we might not own everything, we still can provide it to you through interlibrary loan. I'm going to now click the view full text button to open the PDF of the article. After reading through it, I can see that it's a review. Keep in mind, it does not say it's a systematic review. So it's not as high on the pyramid of evidence, but I can still look and see that it has many references and is very long and very thorough. So I believe that it's a quality review paper. Because I like this article, I now want to save a copy of it and maybe even print a copy. To do this, I'm gonna look for a little PDF symbol. And there are two here. There is one here in red that when I highlight it says download PDF. And then over here on the right, there's another little one in black and white, and I'm going to click that to download PDF. Once I'm in my PDF, I can hover my mouse and move it towards the top in order to get this navigation bar to appear. If I click this little arrow with a line under it, I will download my PDF. If I want to print the article, Again, I just need to move the mouse so I get this top navigation bar and click on the little printer icon. Let's go back to our original results. 11 really isn't that many, so I might want to see at this point if I can think of any other synonyms. In the top bar, I'm going to add or hospitalized and run my search. Now I have 14. That's still not very many, but it's three more potential options. It's always helpful to come up with as many terms as you can and to be willing to change your searches while you're searching. Now it's time to take a look at some of the filters that I can use to refine my search. So if I scroll down and keep an eye on the left side, the first one I see is a limit to full text. Please never select this because you will remove everything that EBSCO does not provide for free. EBSCO and CINAHL are incapable of seeing into our catalog, so even if we own it through the Find It at U of L button, it will think we don't own it and you will exclude the vast majority of literature available. Also, because we have interlibrary loan, full text doesn't matter because we're almost guaranteed to be able to get you everything you need. The one below it is for publication date. So if I wanted results only from a certain time period, I could slide this bar and my results would update to what fits that time frame. If you don't like the results, you can go to this box that appears under current search and cut out the limiter for published date. If I hit that X, it takes me back to my 14 results. Additionally, you can limit by certain terms, by the publisher, by the language, by the age of the subjects or population. So if you have a pediatric population or you're only interested in neonates, you could select it here. Gender, if you're only looking for results on males or females. And then geography, based on if you are only looking in certain regions or countries. Try experimenting with the filters to see what kind of results you get. And if you don't like what you get, remember that you can always X them out here at the top. Now let's try running a search in PubMed. In order to run a Boolean search in PubMed, you need to go to the advanced search option, which you access by hitting the link that says advanced under the search bar. It's not easy to construct a search with all the ORs and synonyms that we have in a way that PubMed will understand just by putting it in the search bar. So using the advanced search builder is the easiest way to make sure that you are doing a successful, efficient search. To construct an advanced search in PubMed, you need to enter the terms one at a time into the enter search term box at the top and add them into the query box below using the blue button that says add on it. When you add your first term, click the blue button. 
but then you need to make sure that you are changing your results to or so we can link our synonyms together. So I would enter hospitalized patient as my first term, hit or, and now it's down below in the query box, and I would add my second term, hospital inpatient, select or, and now they are connected together in the query box below. At this point, I want to stop and I want to run this search so I have my one single search string on its own. After I run this search, I go back to my advanced search, and now I can scroll down and see that my first search string is now below in my search history. Now I go and repeat the process with my next two search strings until they're built and in the search history below. Now that I've run searches for all three search strings, it's time for me to combine them together with AND. If I go to these three dots under action in my first search string and click it, I have the option to add the string to the query box above, and I'll do that. Going to my second search string and clicking these action buttons, I now have different options. I can combine with Boolean operators, and because I'm combining my OR search strings together, I'm going to add with AND. And then I repeat this for the third string. I'm going to hit search, and I have 91 results on this topic. Now let's talk about filters. Similar to CINAHL, I can limit my results using the slider on the side for dates. but I also have many other options, including being able to link by article type. So if I only want to find systematic reviews on this topic, I can click this, and if it doesn't take me to a results list and only one, I can see that I have one. And now I want to see if I have any randomized control trials on this topic. And there are three but only from the years 2015 to 2020. So if I want to see if there are more results earlier than this, I can slide my slider back and find that I have 12 randomized controlled trials on this topic. If I'm interested in different types of studies beyond the ones that are listed here, I can go down to additional filters. This allows me to select tons of different article types of all different evidence levels. By selecting them and then clicking show, I have not limited my results. They've only appeared here on the left side. So I can click out of randomized controls if I no longer want to see them and click into case reports if I want to see if there are case reports on this topic. And in this case, there is one. To completely reset all my filters, I can click Reset All Filters at the bottom. To access full text articles in PubMed, I can look for where it says Free PMC Article, and I'll know that that's always available for free. So if I click into this result, I can click this PMC free full text and know that I will always have access to the PDF. If that's not available, I can click into any of them and just like at CINAHL, click find it at U of L, where it will either take me to the same catalog page we saw last time, the full PDF, or I will be able to request it through interlibrary loan. Thank you for joining us in this Introduction to Literature Searching video series. You should now have everything you need to know to start searching in both CINAHL and PubMed in an effective and comprehensive way. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me at any time at rebecca.morgan at louisville.edu.